the, if life never ended, it might be an endless drudgery, right? But the fact that it's going to end is what makes it so interesting and what makes it so precious. Maybe you knew all this stuff already, but it helps me to get reminded of it every once in a while. And I kind of get reminded of it every time somebody dies. Either someone I know or someone that's famous like Carlin, who in I some way, you know, respect. All right, now having said that schmaltzy stuff, uh, let's do George Carlin. The more you hear this phrase, sanctity of life, you've heard that, sanctity of life. You believe in it? Personally, I think it's a bunch of shit. <laughs> well, I mean, life is sacred? Who said so? God? Hey, if you read history, you realize that God is one of the leading causes of death. <laughs> Has been for thousands of years. Hindus, Muslims, Jews, Christians, all taking turns killing each other because God told them it was a good idea. <laughs> the sword of God, the blood of the Lamb, vengeance is mine. Millions of dead motherfuckers. <laughs> Millions of dead motherfuckers, all because they gave the wrong answer to the God question. You believe in God? No. <laughs> dead. You believe in God? Yes. You believe in my God? No. <laughs> dead. My God has a bigger dick than your God. Now, you see what I'm talking about when I say he's not pulling any punches? Now, who else gets to say that other than George Carlin in America? Anyway, I love this guy. Now, I don't agree with everything George Carlin said. Uh, he does a thing on environmentalists. <laughs> says they're the most holier than thou, you know, in typical Carlin language pricks you've ever seen. Right? And he's a save the planet. We're the virus. Okay, The planet's going to be fine. It's a plan that's going to shake us off like a, a little bunch of fleas. In fact, I think, Dave, you would love it, right? All right, now, uh, he said, how about war? He's like, what, are you kidding me, man? We love war. And as with everything with Carlin, whether you agreed or disagreed with him, he was going to let you have it. He's not going to play around. The old American double standard, you know, say one thing, do something different. And, of course, the country is founded on the double standard. That's our history. We were founded on a very basic double standard. This country was founded by slave owners who wanted to be free. <laughs> Am I right? A group of slave owners who wanted to be free. So they killed a lot of white English people in order to continue owning their black African people so they could wipe out the rest of the red Indian people and move west and steal the rest of the land from the brown Mexican people, giving them a place to take off and drop their nuclear weapons on the yellow Japanese people. You know what the motto? You know what the motto of this country ought to be? You give us a color, we'll wipe it out. We got it. So anyway, about 80 years after the Constitution is ratified, 80 years later, the slaves are freed. Not so you'd really notice it, of course. Just sort of on paper. And that was, of course, during the Civil War. Now, there's another phrase I dearly love. That is a true oxymoron, if I've ever heard one. Civil War. Do you think any country could really have a civil war? <laughs> Say, pardon me. <laughs> I'm awfully sorry. <laughs> you know, of course, at the end, he's got to be funny. And it's not just social commentary. People aren't going to watch him, you know, uh, do a talk show. And he is funny. And you got to give him that, too. Now, the next clip, not only do you have to ear him off the kids, but you got to eye him off the kids, too, because it's put to video. And this is quintessential George Carlin on how America's built on bullshit. Because you do know, folks. You do know. Living in this country, you know that every time you're exposed to advertising, you realize once again that America's leading industry, America's most profitable business is still the manufacture, packaging, distribution, and marketing of bullshit. <laughs> High quality, grade A, prime cut, pure American bullshit. And the sad part is, most people seem indoctrinated to believe that bullshit only comes from certain places, certain sources. Advertising, politics, salesmen, not true. Bullshit is everywhere. Bullshit is rampant. Parents are full of shit, teachers are full of shit, clergymen are full of shit, and law enforcement people are full of shit. This entire country, 
This entire country is completely full of shit and always has been from the Declaration of Independence to the Constitution to the Star Spangled Banner. It's really nothing more than one big steaming pile of red, white and blue all-American bullshit. Because think of how we started. Think of that. This country was founded by a group of slave owners who told us all men are created equal. Oh yeah, all men, except for Indians and niggers and women, right? Always like to use that authentic American language. This was a small group of unelected white male landholding slave owners who also suggested their class be the only one allowed to vote. Now that is what's known as being stunningly and embarrassingly full of shit. And I think, I think Americans really show their ignorance when they say they want their politicians to be honest. What are these fucking cretins talking about? If honesty were suddenly introduced into American life, the whole system would collapse. No one would know what to do. Honesty would fuck this country up. And I think deep down Americans know that. That's why they elected and re-elected Bill Clinton. You betcha. You betcha. Yeah. Because the American people like their bullshit right out front where they can get a good strong whiff of it. Clinton might be full of shit, but at least he lets you know it. Doesn't he? Dole tried to hide it, didn't he? Dole kept saying, I'm a plain and honest man. Bullshit. People don't believe that. What did Clinton say? He said, hi, folks, I'm completely full of shit, and how do you like that? And the people said, you know something? At least he's honest. At least he's honest about being completely full of shit. Now, of course, that was an old clip about Clinton and Dole back in the 1990s. Uh, but, you know, as you listen to the uh, middle of that, you think, Reverend Jeremiah Rice got nothing on this guy. I mean, the George Carlin, you know, challenging the fundamentals of America far more than Reverend Wright ever did. But, of course, he's a comedian and social commentator and white, so it's okay. So uh, it's a good thing George Carlin didn't endorse Barack Obama. By the way, another thing George Carlin said. Uh, politicians uh, always hide behind three things flag religion and children man did he nail that too okay and I the Democrats do it too but the Republicans made an art form out of it flag religion what about children <laughs> okay it's always about protecting the children uh, now Carlin was good at challenging language and the kind of language that we use I mean, you, as you watch this stuff, not only is it funny, but it's, you know, excellent social commentary. Again, whether you agree or disagree, he's challenging your, uh, actual, your assumptions that you make on a daily basis and the marketing that we're fed on a daily basis, uh, almost like the Noam Chomsky of, uh, of comedians. But it didn't happen. And one of the reasons, one of the reasons is because we were using that soft language, that language that takes the life out of life. And it is a function of time. It does keep getting worse. I'll give you another example. Sometime during my life, sometime during my life, toilet paper became bathroom tissue. I wasn't notified of this. No one asked me if I agreed with it. It just happened. Toilet paper became bathroom tissue. Sneakers became running shoes. False teeth became dental appliances. Medicine became medication. Information became directory assistance. The dump became the landfill. Car crashes became automobile accidents. Partly cloudy became partly sunny. Motels became motor lodges. House trailers became mobile homes. Used cars became previously owned transportation. <laughs> room service became guest room dining. And constipation became occasional irregularity. <laughs> when I was a little kid, if I got sick, they wanted me to go to the hospital and see the doctor. Now they want me to go to a health maintenance organization or a wellness center to consult a health care delivery professional. Poor people used to live in slums. Now the economically disadvantaged occupy substandard housing in the inner cities. <laughs> and they're broke. They're broke. They don't have a negative cash flow position. They're fucking broke. Because a lot of them were fired. You know, fired. Management wanted to curtail redundancies in the human resources area. 
So many people are no longer viable members of the workforce. Smug, greedy, well-fed white people have invented a language to conceal their sins. It's as simple as that. The CIA doesn't kill anybody anymore. They neutralize people. <laughs> or they depopulate the area. The government doesn't lie. It engages in disinformation. The Pentagon actually measures nuclear radiation in something they call sunshine units. Israeli murderers are called commandos. Arab commandos are called terrorists. Contra killers are called freedom fighters. Well, if crime fighters fight crime and firefighters fight fire, what do freedom fighters fight? They never mention that part of it to us, do they? Never mention that part of it. <laughs> See, now, who says that on television? You say that on television as a serious commentator, and you will get your ass fired, okay? You want to compare Israeli commandos and Arab commandos and back in the day about the Contras and whether they're freedom fighters? Challenging core assumptions that we make, Carlin. I mean, that was one of a hundred uh, core assumptions that he challenged there and in the other clips that we played for you. I love it. In fact, today, as I went to the bathroom and I thought, this is toilet paper. It isn't bathroom tissue. <laughs> okay. And every once in a while now, when I see these things, I think of George Carlin. God bless his heart. And finally, as a, he, Carlin, in essence, in that stand-up routine you just saw, uh, does his own standoff, uh, send-off, I should say, stand-up uh, uh, for his send-off. And we have no more old people in this country, no more old people. We shipped them all away, and we brought in these senior citizens. <laughs> Isn't that a typically American 20th century phrase, bloodless, lifeless? No pulse in one of them, a senior citizen. But I've accepted that one. I've come to terms with it. I know it's here to stay. We'll never get rid of it. That's what they're going to be called, so I'll relax on that. But the one I do resist, the one I keep resisting, is when they look at an old guy and they'll say, Look at him, Dan. He's 90 years young. <laughs> Imagine the fear of aging that reveals. To not even be able to use the word old to describe someone. To have to use an antonym. And fear of aging is natural, it's universal, isn't it? We all have that. No one wants to get old, no one wants to die, but we do. So we bullshit ourselves. <laughs> I started bullshitting myself when I got to my 40s. As soon as I was in my 40s, I'd look in the mirror and I'd say, Well, I, I guess I'm getting older. <laughs> older sounds a little better than old, doesn't it? Sounds like it might even last a little longer. <laughs> Bullshit, I'm getting old. And it's okay, because thanks to our fear of death in this country, I won't have to die. I'll pass away. <laughs> or I'll expire like a magazine subscription. If it happens in the hospital, they'll call it a terminal episode. The insurance company will refer to it as negative patient care outcome. And if it's the result of malpractice, they'll say it was a therapeutic misadventure. I'm telling you, some of this language makes me want to vomit. Well, maybe not vomit. Makes me want to engage in an involuntary personal protein spill.